comic book fans, this is your host, Travis Collins, a.k.a. Duck Punch, and I am back for another episode of Duck Punch Comics. Uh, it's Thursday, and Thursday means preview day. Uh, we're going to take a look at the books that will be grabbed off the shelf next week, um, September 29th, 2010. Um, and in a rarity for this show, only 10 books are on the docket, so with any... with luck and provided you know my store gets all of it we'll be actually be able to review everything i get a little bit exciting um and my wallet will thank me in the long run now from dc we're gonna be taking a look at action comics number 893 um this is continuing paul D cornell's story about um lex luthor and the quest for the power of the black lanterns um I've said it before, I think I'm supposed to enjoy the story, really like it. I just, you know, the problem is that I just don't feel like Lex Luthor is that interesting as a support, as a as a primary character. I just don't think he has enough on his own to really just grab my attention. Sorry. But I'm hoping Cornell, who I really loved his Captain Britain and MI-13 story, can pull it off, can make me really, you know, not regret picking this up. But we're going to see. Also from DC, Justice Society of America number 43. Um, this is the first outing of the new creative team um, after uh, the uh, Willingham, uh, I would say era, but it really didn't count for much, um, and the JLA, JSA crossover of the last couple months. Um, I'm at least interested to see what happens. Uh, this is, this is going to be a story about Alan Scott and Obsidian, his son. So I'm hoping that this is going to be useful, um, going to be interesting, but we'll see what happens. Um, I'm wary at this point. JSA has been through so much crap the last couple years. It, it's really sad at the end of the day. Really sad that a book of this caliber has fallen so much. And last up from DC, that's right, only three DC books. Wonder Woman, number 603. Uh, this is continuing J. Michael Straczynski's uh, relaunch, reimagining, retcon, whatever, of uh, the Wonder Woman franchise. Um, and a lot of people have criticized this book by saying that they don't know what's going on. It's hard to follow. And I think part of it is that's kind of intentional. Um, we're supposed to be confused by this weird story, this weird timeline thing that um, Straczynski's doing. But I will say, in acquiescence to the critics, that he does need to start giving some answers, giving some concrete moves toward explaining just what's going on. So, we'll see what happens. Now, that's it from DC. Now, from Marvel... Um, as usual, the lion's share of the books of the week. Um, up first is going to be Amazing Spider-Man number 644, uh, part three of the Origin of Species story by Mark Wade. Um, I really liked it. I really liked uh, 643. I thought it was very well done. Um, very, very neat twist at the very end. Um, and I'm expecting more of the same from this. It's really been a good little story. I know a lot of people don't like the art. Um, Azaketa. Is very polarizing, but I really think he fits this book. Next, it's going to be Avengers Prime, number three. Um, this is continuing the miniseries, um, exploring just what happened after Siege um, with Iron Man, Thor, and Steve Rogers. It's kind of hard for me to be excited about this, just because I don't know where it's going. I have no clue just what the, what the actual story is, other than these three have been thrown into some alternate universe or universes um still it's three of my favorite characters and i do just at least want to understand what's going on um so eh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look captain america patriot number two is also on the pull list now the first issue was really really good um great little captain america side story about um Patriot, um, who was on the home front during the war, during World War II, I should say. Um, this is not really required reading for anyone. I mean, if you never read this, you're not going to miss anything important to the overarching story of Captain America. But if you're like me and you're just a real big fan of the character and you're a big fan of his supporting cast, then this is this is worth it. Plus, the art is gorgeous. 
Like, brings tear to your eyes, gorgeous. Uh, speaking of Captain America, Captain America number 610 comes out. This is the last issue of uh, Brubaker's um, Daredevil, uh, Daredevil, Captain America, why can I not? No. Of Brubaker's Captain America versus Baron Zemo story arc. Um, this has been outstanding, and it's leading up to the uh, hyped-up uh, Trial of Captain America story arc. This, I mean, Brubaker is really just one of the best um, Captain America writers ever. Um, he went through kind of a sour patch there, um, right around uh, Captain America Reborn. Um, but he's back in style. This is just this has been a lot of fun, um, from whatever angle you come at it from. Just really good stuff. Secret Warriors number twenty is also coming out next week. Um, this is going to be a return to the um, actual Secret Warriors team that um, was introduced in the very first issue back when, even before then, during Secret Invasion, uh, which is something I'm really looking forward to because I really wasn't a big fan of the last story arc, uh, the last ride of the Howling Commandos. It wasn't terrible, but it's not what I was looking for. It's not the book I wanted to read. Um, but this is uh, looking going back to the original team and definitely looking forward to seeing what happens. Especially after the end of the last issue, focusing on the, the primary team. Um, that's going to be interesting. Last up um, are two X-Men books. Uh, X-Men Forever 2, number 8. And I say this every time this book comes out. This is not a book to be taken seriously. This book doesn't matter for anything. This is literally, hey, what would have happened if? Um, I enjoy it because I need a cheap chuckle, and I'm a, I'm a, nos, I'm a nostalgia whore. So. The other book coming out, the other X-Men title, and the last book we're picking up, is X-Men Legacy number 240. Um, this is continuing the story of Rogue's team in uh, India with um, the, the, wet, the upcoming wedding of one of the young X-Men coming up. Um, and trying to find out just what the angle of the Children of the Vault, what their whole purpose in being there is. You know, I'm, I'm excited. I really want to see where this goes. Mike Carey is one of the best X-Men writers today. I would, you know, I would love to see him on Uncanny, but since he's on Legacy, he's do, you know, I'll take him there, too. Great stuff. Um, you know, the only addendum, though, is that this book is really... Very continuity heavy, as even the name suggests. This is not a book for new readers. This is a book primarily aimed at people who have been reading X Men for a while. Now, if you can deal with that, if you can sort of put up with just a lot of continuity uh, illusions, then it's great. But if you're not, a, if you're not a huge fan of the X Men, then you might want to skip this title. Um, so there you go, guys. Ten books we're getting next week. Only ten. Um, but some of them are, should be pretty good. Um, have high hopes for X-Men Legacy and um, for Amer Amazing Spider-Man. And um, looking for actually looking forward for the first time in a while to uh, Justice Society. Just to see what the new team, the new direction is going to look like. As always, guys, leave comments. Let me know what you thought. Um, I will be back probably tomorrow because I'll be out of town Saturday to do the first... Uh, installment of our reviews and I hope you guys have a great night